Previously on Historical Geocaching, I'm visiting the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. Most recently, I've learned about Alice Paul and Carrie Katz's role in the fight for women's suffrage, as explained in the Museums with Liberty and Justice for All exhibit. Well, I hope you all have been really enjoying this tour of the With Liberty and Justice for All exhibit. I know that I have really been. I don't think I've, in all my 11 years of coming here, I don't think I have ever delved into this exhibit this deep. And I mean, I've just hit up a few highlights. And it's like, oh yeah, that's cool. And on to the next thing. But just to read some of the plaques and soak it all in is a really cool experience. Now let's get on to the final section of the With Liberty and Justice for All um, exhibit. Let's go on to the civil rights section. Here we go. Which, now that women can vote, now this is more of um, blacks voting and just having equal life with whites, which they were so unfairly segregated. This is the coop. Uh, costume um, of the Ku Klux Klan, which were um, basically old Confederate soldiers after the Civil War, who decided to continue and enforce um, white supremacy at a cost, uh, physical and career cost, negative cost, to both um, the freed blacks and the whites who supported and good things happening to the blacks. Some different pictures and signs. You see, like here, you know, a white waiting room with a colored waiting room. Here's another picture with some caption. It says, um, Rosa Parks. She was determined, proud, and gentle. She was a quiet, soft-spoken woman who worked as a seamstress in a local department store. But she also worked with local civil rights groups. And she had training in community action from school in Tennessee. So when the time came for her to make a stand, she was well prepared. And on, uh, let's see, another one here. Get up from there, take a stand. Three other African Americans have already gotten up and moved to the back of the bus. Rosa Parks knew that she would face public humiliation, arrest, and possible threats to herself and her family. But she was tired of giving in and simply refused to give up her seat. Some more memorabilia here. See folks, basically the story is on December 1, 1955. Rosa Parks was in a bus in Montgomery, Alabama. Yes. <laughs> and. Um, it was customary, it was the rule back then called the unfair laws that um, the blacks always got second-rate seating and if the whole bus was full and a white person wanted to come on the bus, they could kick a black person off. And she refused to to get off. And she both very figuratively and literally sat down and stood up. Um, what's really cool here about this exhibit here at the Henry Ford Museum is yes, now you could have never guessed it, but this is what Henry Ford has known well for. Here is the very bus that Rosa Parks was on on that day in 1955. How cool is that? You guys want to go on inside? Let's go.
So what can you tell me about this awesome bus? This is the Rosa Parks bus. Okay. On December 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks sat in this seat right here. Right here? The one right behind it. Nice. This one right here. Okay. Cool. And she refused to give up her seat for some of the white passengers that were boarding the bus. Okay. Because of that, a one-year uh, bus boycott by the black people of Montgomery, Alabama ensued. After one year, the bus company had lost so much money that they were begging the Supreme Court to do something. The Supreme Court desegregated buses um, in December 6th, I believe. 1956. From then on, we had the Selma said it sit-ins that desegregated restrooms, restaurants, and movie theaters, and then the marches on Washington just kind of continued the, the uh, civil rights movement. Cool. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Enjoy your visit. Well, I hope you guys really enjoyed that. I know I really did getting to sit in the very seat that Rosa Parks sat in and stood up all at the same time. I love all the major, awesome American history, original history that Henry Ford has collected here in the Henry Ford Museum. 